Today I want to talk about bench press technique and specifically the bar path that we are aiming for during the bench press. Now I've got a couple of videos ready on YouTube where I discuss the setup in the bench press. Um, if you haven't seen those, I'm going to put a link to those in the description below. So I've got one called uh, setting up the bench press for scapular depression, it's a bit of an older one, as well as setting up the bench press for a maximal arch. So again, if you haven't seen those, go check those out. Today I'm going to be mainly focusing on the execution of the bench, so how we actually do the lift. Now the bench press is a lift that is highly technical and it also has a really big range of, uh, I guess, styles that you'll see at a high level. What I mean by that is take another lift like the deadlift, for example. How people deadlift uh, is pretty common and it's pretty consistent even amongst uh, the top level lifters. And there isn't a huge amount of style. The way you actually lift the bar is the same. The principles are always the same. And even for lifters that have my, maybe different uh, leverages, they can all kind of lift in a similar way. Whereas the bench press has, I guess, really distinct styles. And you'll notice that when you watch uh, high level lifters and there isn't really one way to do it. You'll see some lifters that have like really huge arches and wide grips. And you'll see lifters that are a bit more flat backed and more moderate grips. You'll see lifters that have a really vertical bar path, which is what I'm gonna go over today. And you'll see lifters that have really uh, like diagonal bar path or the J curve bar path. So there's this really big, I guess, like there's a bit of a spectrum in terms of how we execute the bench press. And what I'm gonna to do today is take you through one specific style of bench press, which is gonna be the vertical bar path style. Now, I'm not gonna claim that this is the best technique. Uh, I'm gonna just say that this is one style. And if you use it and it works for you, that's great. And if you use it and it doesn't work with your body, that's also very valid. And I've experienced that myself with a number of people that I've, I've taught this style to. Some lifters have an immediate response. They say, whoa, this feels so strong. I feel so stable. I can't believe I never benched like this before. And then other people will say the complete opposite. This hurts, it feels weak, it feels unnatural. Even after weeks of like persisting with a the style, they hate it as well. So all you can do is just try it and see how you go from there. And if this helps even a few of you, I'd be really happy with that. Okay, so what is this style of bench press that I'm talking about? Uh, so I'm gonna kind of divide the bench press into two styles. So there's like the more diagonal bar path and there's a more vertical bar path. And the vertical bar path is one that I teach most people. Uh, what does this involve? Well, as the name suggests, or as, the, as it sounds, the path of the bar is gonna be fairly vertical. It's gonna be almost dead vertical on the way down, and it's gonna be mostly vertical on the way up. In order to be able to do this, you're gonna need a pretty big arch and a bit more of a wider grip. Um, you'll also notice that people that take on this technique will use their pecs a lot more, so the elbows are gonna to have to flare a lot in order for the bar to come down in a straight line which is going to use the pecs a lot more, as opposed to using the delts or the triceps, which would be a bit more of a modest grip, low touch point, diagonal bar path technique. So uh, I'm gonna show you what that kind of looks like. Okay, so, take, uh, so imagine that this was a lifter. So this is their head, that's the bar, uh, that's the bench, sorry. That's their neck and that's their chest, that's their torso. Now in a traditional bench press, a lifter might start the bar over here and bring the bar like this to their chest, and you'll notice that the bar path is fairly diagonal. And then when they're trying to lift the bar up, they're gonna push it along the same line for the most part. They're gonna push it back and finish in that same spot. Whereas the technique that I propose is that we start the bar over the chest. This is probably the hardest part of this whole process, is we start the bar over the chest rather than starting the bar over our shoulders. So instead of, instead of starting the bar over here, we're gonna start the bar over here. So this is probably one of the biggest misconceptions about the straight bar path, is that we're not starting the bar in the same spot and then bringing the bar down straight, because otherwise the bar would land on our clavicle. What we're doing instead is bringing the bar out over our chest so that the bar can come down in a straight line straight to the exact same touch point. The touch point is mostly the same, maybe a little bit higher, but it's mostly the same. So now the bar is gonna come down like this, and you notice that's a lot straighter. What often ends up happening is I get people to bring the bar out over their chest, but on the way down, they follow the same bar path that they used to. So they'll do something that looks like this. They'll start the bar over here and then do this. And they end up just touching lower. That's obviously wrong. What we're trying to do is uh, bring the bar down to the same touch point. So in order to do that, you're gonna to need to heavily flare your elbows. And you know, a good cue when you're doing it is actually to think like bring the bar up to your face. Okay, so I've explained the, uh, the technique and I've shown it to you in a diagram, but you really have to see what it looks like yeah, on the bench, so I'm gonna demonstrate that. Okay, so like I said before, you're gonna to need to have a bit of a bigger arch and a bit of a wider grip. So my grip on the power bar is with my ring fingers on the rings. And I'm gonna show you the difference about the starting position and you'll be quite surprised as to how much variation you can have in your starting position. A lot of people 
all start the bar like this. And the bar is over their chest, oh sorry, over their shoulders, and then they touch like this. So notice where my elbows are, they're quite tucked, and the bar is touching probably top of my abs, bottom of my sternum. And then on the way up, they press like this, finishing over the shoulders. What I'm suggesting is instead of starting here, we're gonna start the bar over your belly. And instead of your elbows tucking in like this, your elbows are actually gonna tuck, oh sorry, flare outwards like this. So what that looks like is bar comes out to here. It's gonna be flared on the way down, very straight, straight back up. One more time. Bar starts over your shoulders, oh sorry, over your chest. Elbows flare. Bar comes up in a straight line. Now it can be useful to think of when we're pressing to tuck our elbows on the way up. So it's almost like kind of backwards of what a lot of people's technique might be like, or very different to the diagonal bar path. In a diagonal bar path bench press, lifters will like tuck their elbows on the way down, touch and then shoot it back towards the face. And then as the bar comes up, they might even flare their elbows out and try to catch it and push it out with their shoulders and their pecs. Whereas the style that I teach, it's usually the bar starts over your chest, your elbows flare out and on the press, you know, on the press signal, your elbows will do this. And it's like your elbows kind of uh, tuck as you press. They won't actually tuck, like, you won't physically be able to bring your elbows in that much, but that's the sensation you're going for. And you're going for like this sensation through your lats where it feels like your lats are, are twisting and you're pushing through your whole upper body girdle rather than just through your pecs. Now, the name might be a little bit miss, uh, there might be like a bit of a misnomer in the name with the vertical bar part that I'm talking about is the vertical part is pretty much only in the descent. So on the way down, we want the bar to come down in a straight line. Um, and it's not necessarily the straighter the better or the more vertical the better, but it's just more vertical than normal or than, than most others. So sometimes if the bar path is like on a two degree angle on the way down, bringing it to zero degrees, like bringing it to perfectly vertical isn't better. That might not be the case because this is a spectrum. We're not talking like distinct styles. We're mainly talking on a spectrum here. So it's just mostly vertical on the way down. And on the way up, it's not as vertical. I still cue my lifters to press back. Like I still cue them to like push the bar back off the chest. We definitely don't want to be pushing the bar forward like towards our hips. So the way I like to think of it is it's like if the bar hits your chest here, it should kind of scoop back slightly and then finish up in a straight line. So there is still a small J, J curve that you might have heard before, but the J is very subtle and it's only immediately off the chest. And once it comes off the chest, it, then you can continue to push it up in a straight line. Okay, so that's the vertical bar path technique in the bench press. Um, like I said before, it, some people really don't respond well to this at all. And uh, you know, I do warn you, if you have got bad shoulders or you don't have a particularly good arch or you don't have particularly good retraction in the shoulders, it uh, might bother your shoulders or especially the front of your shoulders. So just be warned that it can be uh, quite tough on your shoulders. But if you've got the prerequisites, like I said before, then it might be something that suits you. In the learning process, uh, I talk about the learning process a lot in a lot of other videos, but you have to move slowly and you have to take your time with every rep and you don't wanna rush through anything, otherwise you're not gonna learn anything. Especially if you already know how to bench press, that's the hardest part is you already have a pattern and overriding that's really difficult. So my suggestion is stop between every rep, bring the butt out over your chest, on the way down, cue elbows flared, and on the way up, cue elbows in. And if you finish a rep over your shoulders, stop, bring the bar back out over your chest and do the same thing. Elbows flared on the way down and um, tuck on the way up. Last thing I will say is that with a tuck, it's useful to think you're not just tucking at the elbow, but it's your whole shoulder complex. So like your scapula essentially depresses and it posteriorly tilts, that's a bit more complicated, but your whole shoulder complex kind of goes, when the bar's on your chest and you pause, you kind of go, and everything kind of comes underneath. Anyway, I hope you found that helpful. Uh, let me know how you go with this technique or if it's something that you found useful for you. Um, and I'll speak to you next time.